dangerous this time. My mic should be working because I actually, uh, you know, turned on the settings this time. Um, I'm gonna leave the the snapped window open for a couple of minutes, and if no one comes in, I'm gonna close it. So I may or may not see your chat if you do come in. Um, not that you're hearing me, anyway. Okay, so uh, this is Elite Dangerous. This is my Viper M uh, Mark IV. It is. I bought it to do bounty hunting, but I've realized I am terrible at the combat in this game. Like absolutely awful. So I think uh, I think I'm gonna go back to my old uh, my old baby here. All right. Actually, let's see if I can. That was my... See, this is the first ship you get in the game. The free ship, the Sidewinder. And I traded up to an Adder pretty quick. Because I want it to deliver things, and I still want it to be able to do a little combat. You can't do that. You cannot do that in this ship. Um, I ended up really hating it. Uh, my next one was actually a Cobra. They don't have Cobra here. And my main ship is an Asp Explorer, which is like this one here. Um... I want to get one of these eventually. This is a vulture. This is probably the best um, combat sh ship in the game, or at least for bounty hunting. It's just really maneuverable, really powerful, really fast. It's pretty expensive. Um, uh, so I would need... Um, Yeah, I still don't have quite enough for it. Got another million. And I can just trade this one out. I might actually do that eventually. Okay, so... Um, what I'm going to do... First, I'm going to check the mission. See if there's anything. I can make some quick money. Right now, I'm not taking anything that isn't at least six figures, just because I'm going to be going across a small portion of the galaxy to try and get my other ship back so I can do some um, exploring and stuff like that. Except really the exploring is, is my favorite part of this game so far. Alright. See a lot of things I can't take. I don't have cargo in this. Okay, so let's see where this ship is. New. Ha! Thank God, that'll be super easy to find. Okay. Okay, so we're going to the system of new. I'm going to go ahead and unsnap this so I don't have my screen back. Oh, yeah. All right. Here. Okay, the galaxy map is ridiculous in this game. Um, this game uses... It also takes an undetermined amount of time to load. It's literally different every time. Uh, this map is massive. Um, I really was disappointed with the map in No Man's Sky because it only gives you a tiny little area to kind of look in. Like in terms of the number of things you can see in the distance you can't really get a huge picture so this is Elite Dangerous's galactic map um, you may recognize that if it's the Milky Way galaxy this is set in a one-to-one -one copy of the Milky Way galaxy meaning it has I think 400 billion suns and well, let me just show you so here I am in the system here and I make sure I'll Stars are on. Okay. And now I'm going to just zoom out a little. Okay. Like just a very little. Alright, just a little bit more. There's an up and down. Oh yeah. Starting to get an idea of it. Up and down. Okay, I'm going to do it just a little more. 
we're starting to not see some stuff now. But you can see about how big that bubble is. Um, and this is the entire map. Um, this over here is a community goal that's going on. A station, like, disappeared at one point, um, and everyone was looking for it, and a player actually found it way before the developers intended them to, I believe, and hilarity ensued. Okay, and so this is the rough area that I have explored in the inhabited portion of the, of the galaxy. Luckily, my ship is fairly close by. Uh, I have another one up here. That's my Sidewinder, my very first ship. Um, I don't think you can sell that one because it's it's a loner, so if you were to lose all of your ships, you'd get that one back, I guess. Um, these things here, those mark the location of what are called engineers, and they're kind of these special um, people that you can, if you do certain things for, they'll make you like really nice equipment weapons and stuff for your ship and then the these other little markers or little bookmarks I've, I've placed because of one reason or another um, so let's go ahead and get to new here and the, the cursor always lines up directly with the dot that's on the 2d plane um, it took me forever to figure that out, like, cause I kept trying to like line up with this and grab it and do stuff, but now you just you just go to the thing right there. So it's only 33 light years away. That's gonna take me. Which jumps is that? I'll see in just a second. Those are light jumps um, to stars. You'll see what that looks like in just a second. Uh, so I have gas and everything. Is my yeah, it looks pretty good since I had to respawn after dying. I got whipped. Whipped. Bye -bye. Oh, yes, I'm inside, too. This is good. All right, so this tells me the design of the space station tells me that, you are clear for departure. that the developers have all read Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. And if you haven't read that book and you're listening to this, go read that book. It is the best hard science fiction book you will ever, ever, ever read. Um, hard science fiction is a, is a type of science fiction where everything is um, kind of scientifically possible or just on the realm of possibility. So Star Wars is not thought where Star Wars is really a fantasy movie. Uh, less science fiction, fantasy with science fiction elements. But, God, I can hear the lisp in my nerd voice coming out. Whee! Hard science fiction, though, is, is very accurate. It can be a little dry. Uh, but, man, it's, it's wonderful. So let's take a look at what we just flew out of. It's not quite a cylinder on the outside, but um, it allows for a lot more stuff here. Um, it actually rotates. I, I'm rotating with it. All right, so what we need to do now is... Take a look at my ship from the outside. my ship. Kind of hard to move this camera. I don't really know what it wants to do. There we go. There we go. So this is my, my ship at this point. It's a Viper Mark IV. It's aight. Pretty maneuverable. Okay, so every ship has a different range that it can jump to, like how big um, 
how far it can go in one kind of jaunt based on the size of its frameship drive. And the frameship drive is the is one of the MacGuffins in this game. Or not MacGuffins, but the gimmies. Where uh, you, know, you can have faster than light travel. That is the the given in this game that they can't really say is true. But everything else is pretty dang amazing. Like, when I'm flying this ship, I have flight assist on. So if I stop moving in a direction, my ship stops. But if I turn off flight assist, so... Flight, right, assist, now, off. flight, assist, is na flight assist is now off, so I, I'm flying, right? If I turn, I'm going to keep turning. If I do this... I'm not touching the controller anymore, but I'm going to keep turning like this because that's just, that's what my momentum is doing, you know? It's not going to stop me because there's no air to stop me. Um, a lot of people use that in combat to, to help. Back on. And then that keeps my little, little side engines keeping me steady. All right, here we go. I'm going to jump to light speed. Frameship drive charging. Got to make sure I'm lined up. Uh, we got to make sure our throttle's up, and um, we have to make sure on the lower right-hand corner there are some mass lock, landing gear, cargo scoop. All of those Four, have to be clear. Three, two, one, engage. Now I was a little disappointed when I first started playing about how this screen's the same every time. Um, it's always kind of jerky in the same way. Uh, but then I realized it's really a, a really nice loading screen. Around. That part's always terrifying. Like out right fuel scooping. But I have what's called a fuel scoop. So I can refill my fuel while I'm traveling. Fuel scooping complete. Excuse me. Uh, on a trip like this, it's not really necessary because I could actually make the entire trip within a gas tank, and my gas tank is right down here in the center of the screen now. The white portion is actually how much fuel it's going to take me to get to that star in the upper left-hand corner. I mean, underneath are the uh, requirements I mentioned earlier, the checklist. You can't be mass-locked, which means you can't be too close to something massive. Um, your landing gear has to be out, and you can't have your cargo scoop out. I mean, I never use my cargo scoop, so... Here we go. I like to let my, if you look on the left side of this circle here, that percentage is the heat in my uh, my ship. Um, I like to get it below, I think, 50% before I make the jump to hyperspace, because that usually keeps it, well, in my other vehicle, it has to below a certain level. In this newer vehicle, things are a bit different. Um... So I like to make sure it's below that 50% mark before I make the jump uh, at any point. And my, my ships always do heat up a bit more because of the <clears throat> the fuel scooping, because you have to get so close to the star to fuel do scooping. it. You can be turned in any direction, though, so I can get a nice look there at the surface of the star. It's really far away. I mean, it would take me a minute to get there if it were possible. Fuel scooping but the, the game would actually crash my ship way that it wouldn't allow me to, to do that. Ooh, I'm getting too warm. Fuel scoop disengaged. In my other ship, the one I'm going to, you can, like, you can see all the way around you um, in the cockpit. Which is why it looks kind of ugly from Friendship the outside. Drive but, charging. Oh, from the inside, it's gorgeous. I really have noticed that that nerd lisp, though. It's really bothering me. Four, three, two, one, engage. Wait for my wife to get home. When she does, I'll probably be jumping off of here pretty quickly, so we can have our husband and wifey time. Like you do. She was playing a new demo yesterday. Maybe she'll wanna keep playing. Fuel okay. scooping. Fuel scoop disengaged. 
I'm just gonna go straight to this place. I'm tired of waiting. Frameshift drive charging. This game is the reason uh, the Xbox needs a freaking Hotas or however Five. you say it, joystick throttle. Pedal set would be good too for so you could turn with it. Because this doesn't well I guess it does really. In airplanes you can you can roll, which is what you use the stick or the the thing for, or you can turn to the left or right, and that's what you use the little pedals for. Fuel scooping. Um and it controls a lot like that in this game, where one stick my right stick turns me left and right. Fuel scoop disengaged. Um, like the pedals would, and then my my left stick controls the roll right and left and then my pitch. I, I, I can never remember what Friendship y'all actually is. Like, is that that, or is it this? I don't know. I think it's that. Don't, don't quote me. I, I, I'm written in the planes. I've ridden in planes, so that makes me an expert. That's my very, very basic Boy Scout understanding. Please don't get mad at me. You're like a pilot or something. And if you do get mad at me, don't you? Yell? Yelling scares me. There it is. Fuel skip disengaged. That thing that I just did, and that little meter over here. Frame shift drive that made sounded like a giant cosmic fart. Um, that's a scanner. And if I go near a star um, with a certain type of scanner and I use it, it will tell me everything that's in that system. And that's how you do the exploring. Um, you travel to stars, scan the system, and then you can actually scan the planets and the individual bodies in the system for additional uh, um, information and and money eventually that you you get to cash in on. Petty. There are black holes in the game too. Um, that's probably my favorite thing. I haven't seen one yet, but my plan is to eventually visit Sagittarius A, uh, which is in the center of the the galaxy, uh, just like in. In real life, and you can see the um, what do you call it? Well, I can't remember the name of the effect now, but you can you can watch the warping of space time basically as you get near it. Everything behind it, from your perspective, distorts. You can see the event horizon and stuff. It looks pretty cool from the videos I've seen, anyway. Apparently, it takes forever to fly to the center of the friggin' Milky Way because it's several, like, tens of thousands of light years away. And even in this game, that takes forever. Because the longest you can you can jump in one, you know, one loading screen is about, we'll say, 40 light years, and that's actually more than than most ships could ever do without special equipment. Um, I think the max max is 50 I've read in some forms, but I'm not certain. So, and each one of those takes, you know, it can take 30, 30 seconds to a minute. And you have to do that thousands of times. Not thousands, but a lot. And it's taken people weeks. There's jokes about people uh, coming down with space madness trying to make the trip to Sagittarius A. I haven't even come close. Like, not even close. Every time I try, I get discouraged and turn around. Uh, where I put my throttle down here, you see where it's in the blue? That's to make sure I don't um, pass the place. 
because if I'm going too fast, I'll fall into the gravity well of the system and it'll propel me past everything and I won't be able to slow down in time. Usually when it's set at about 75% or less though, you can, you can cruise in without worrying about um, overshooting your thing and you'll, you'll be able to drop out of what's called super cruise pretty easily. Because you can see I'm going at about just under the speed of light right now. That's what C means. And, uh, of course, when I'm jumping between stars, I'm going much faster than even that. I always feel like I'm coming in too fast. And these planets are truly gargantuan. I'll try to land on one um, once I get my, new, my other ship so I can show you guys. And the ones I can land on are much smaller than this because that's a gas giant. The things I can land on are only airless worlds at this point in the game's development. Um, this is Elite Dangerous with the uh, first season called Horizons. And seasons are basically expansion packs that get... They're like season passes, honestly, and you get expansions on a regular basis. Uh, they've kind of fallen behind this year, so I don't know if they're going to go on to the next season or not. But after that, that's going to be on the other side. You always have to request docking. So I have to go to landing pad 42. That wasn't my most graceful landing. Believe it or not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The Imperial Flight Operations Bureau wishes you a pleasant and productive visit, Commander. Thank you, Commander. Okay. And if there's a Russian person watching, I'm very sorry if I just did. Okay. Storm ships. Yes. Because my storage ship is totally badass. Um, this is probably the best of the, the exploration vehicles you can get. I blew my wad on it pretty early, but uh, I'm very happy with it. Here she is. See that beautiful cocktail? Look at that. Look at that. Oh. It's just pretty. All right. Let's take a look at this. If not, I think I'm going to get rid of my docking computer. 
much as it pains me to do that. Cause auto docking is just so easy. These are some great contracts. Oh, and this isn't a menu here. Um, I can I can still look around my cockpit, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, we've got to totally redo my, my outfitting here. Man, let's see. Let's get some good stuff. That will actually be perfect. Okay, so motion. Motion. Oh, I thought that was one of them on here. Dang. Oh, there's two there, though. That's not bad. It's going to be those ones that I take. See, I'll make that in two jumps. It would have taken my other ship like six or seven to do that. So that's nice. I have to remember to accept the mission there. Excuse me. Okay. So I've just accepted those missions. I think I have 24 hours to get those done. 24 hours real time. This is a persistent universe. While I'm not playing online with, um, with people, I'm still in the same universe. It's just we don't instance in the same area, so... All right. Let's go to my optional internal. Get rid of this bad boy. Get rid of this bad boy. We gonna add. Buying that one because it, it weighs less. Um, and now I'm gonna buy one of these. That's what you need to get around the planet. There's no first person uh, ambulation yet. Ooh, I could actually keep my docking computer if I want it. Is there anything else that I would need? I love this ship. Ooh. That's good. Cool. I think they're really getting 
any bigger than that. I'm gonna keep my docking computer for now. Let's check my core internal, make sure everything is good. Yeah, it's hard to find anything better than that. There's, there is one better, but it's like five million or some crazy crap. You don't need a good life support system really um, when you're exploring because if you get damaged enough to need it, you're not going to have enough time to get back to any kind of civilization. I did that because it will give me, um, it'll let me recharge my boost, uh, and your boost can be pretty important when escaping from pirates. It helps you to get out of the range of their, their weapons. Um, okay. Point defense. All right. Yeah, get rid of that. Start saving up for, uh, check out my map once more and I'm going to mark the station um, in my route so I can jump straight to it. Turn in my mission there and then uh, run and land on the planet so you guys can see what that's like. And it's so much cooler in this game than in No Man's Sky I have to say. No Man's Sky it's like I don't know it's just Super lame and quick. Don't get me wrong, I like that game. I'm enjoying it, but... Alright, so this is the station I need to go to, and I'm gonna plot a route, and then I'm gonna land on this little moon here. And I'll be able to mark where I'm going there, too, so... But only after I do the other one. bothered me the way that looked. It didn't look like it was... Okay. Sometimes there are little visual things that... <sighs> This is what I mean about inconsistent load times. Um, I literally just had this up a second ago, but it's it's taking 18 years to load. Okay, cool. Um, I just hit B, and we have to wait for it to 
to decide. Okay. Yeah, the, that is the most frustrating thing about this game for me, though, is the inconsistent load times. I'm okay with long load times. Um, I just, you know, would like to know generally how long it might be, especially when I'm jumping through the hyperspace, and I know I'm going to jump out. Frickin' star is going to be right there. It's good to know how long of time I have to... Pay attention or not. Sometimes it takes a Pass down. Way too. Woo! Jeez, I barely made that. This is the speed boost. You are clear to resume. Please determine the flight path. Imperial Flight Operations Bureau now signing off. Alright, so you can see down the lower right hand corner that mass lock went from white to whatever color that is. And um, I'm charging up for my job to have a space. So that was me discovering a lot of stuff. Oh. Okay, steady. Oh, alright, so I can go ahead and power up a little. And check my system map. Fuel scoop disengaged. Nothing really worth checking out, all mostly airless worlds. So we'll like ghost hunters and on to the next. Frameshift drive charging. Show such bullshit. Here we go. Okay, that was my problem. I wish I had one of those boards like John Madden so I could circle things for you guys. <sighs> Gosh. wonder how many of you know who John Madden is. Like, who he actually is. Incoming mission critical message. Crap. That's usually either they've changed location or they want Fuel you to scooping. get in there faster. Okay, cool. Just time frame. Don't care. Disengaged. Oh. oh yeah, I'm not far from that at all. Medium gear here. A lot of people have accused this game of being like uh Euro. Euro truck simulator in space, and yeah, it's not a fair comparison. It can be a very relaxed experience, and that's that's the way I play it. Uh, typically speaking, is to have a very relaxed experience flying through space. That's beautiful. I really like it. Speed's still good. Good and uh, down here you can kind of see a little, little target thing uh, that shows you 
kind of your alignment to the your destination. Line up, just use the instruments if you want. As soon as I'm under one megameter, I can drop out of Super Cruise. And a megameter, I think, is 1,000 kilometers. I think it's now I can disengage my hyperspace, and it's going to drop me just in front of... Just in front of... <laughs> Station here. I have to get within seven and a half kilometers before I can request docking. Um, and I'm going to slow this ship to actually a complete 